Okay guys, I'm off. It's been a uh, stressful week to be honest. I'll explain in a bit, but I'm off on a sunset photography excursion. It's a bit of a drive to get to where I'm going, so better move. Okay, so I ended up driving way farther than I was planning on because I, I had time. I'm really early for sunset actually. So I drove almost to Sines. I don't know how you pronounce it actually. I'm at Cabo Porto or just past Cabo Porto. I wanted to do some location scouting because on the map it looked cool and it is cool. It, it almost kind of reminds me of the coast of Oregon minus the really nice weather. There's some sand dunes, there's lots of little beaches, and there's tons of these rocks. So I'm in a location scout, show you around a little bit, and then we'll head to our eventual sunset location, which is farther south. This is incredible. There's just endless seascape opportunities here. And there's just countless beaches that come down along this coast with these rocks out at sea. It's absolutely awesome. But I want to shoot something a little bit closer to Lago so I don't get back in the middle of the night. So I'm going to head to a location that I've actually photographed before. I photographed it whew, maybe like four years ago right when this vlog was starting. Actually, it was one of the, the first things I ever did on this vlog was come to Portugal. So I'm excited to go back to this location. I don't think I'll be able to do better than the photo I did last time, but I kind of want to try. Okay, I made it to my spot. I actually, I'm not 100% sure this is my spot. I'm basically just going off my memory from four or five years ago when I came here. When I came here the first time, I kind of just stumbled upon it. I was just driving down this crazy coastal road. Yeah, this is the spot. This is the spot. I was just driving on this crazy road and I found this. And I don't have my drone with me. It's in Canada, long story. But I'm actually just gonna show you the drone footage from four years ago, because a place like this kinda needs the drone to explain it. So here's some old footage. Man, how good is this? I still have like an hour until sunset, so I've got some grocery store sushi and this view and nobody around. Fun fact about Portugal, there's so many locations for photos that I don't think I've ever seen another tripod at a location. I don't think I've ever seen somebody else taking photos in a place I was taking pictures. I mentioned at the start of this video that I was stressed today, so I think maybe I'll, I'll explain why. And if you don't care about life, YouTube has like chapters now, so you can skip through this whole life talk and get to the photography if you want. But for those who do care, the reason I'm stressed is because Jody and I um, bought this apartment that was in development last July. We did so because the banks told us we'd be able to get a mortgage. We paid 20% of the house's value to the developer. The developer finished the place. We went to the bank and we said, hey, can we get our mortgage now? And they said, yeah, no problem, of course. We're just gonna process everything. And then they processed everything and denied us. We got our mortgage rejected. And the reason that they said 
was because we're both self-employed and they think that it's an unsafe time to be self-employed, you know, with the current world pandemic. We are working with them to try to come up with like an alternative solution that, you know, we can still make this happen. I'm still really confident to make that we're gonna make this happen, but yeah, it's just, it's just stressful. For those of you who don't know, who have never, you know, haven't been around the channel that long, well, you might not know is that I don't have a trust fund. I don't have an inheritance. I don't travel the world because I'm rich or because somebody gave me money. In fact, my family hasn't given me money since I was 18 years old. I was beyond broke for years when I started this career to the point that there was times I was sleeping on the beach because I couldn't afford a hotel room. There was points that I was, uh, I just couldn't eat for a couple days. I remember being in Paramaribo in Suriname and for three days I had one packet of itchy band noodles to eat. So I'm not rich or wealthy and everything that I've built, I built from scratch. You know, I went from those days to now, 10 years later, being at a point where we are very financially, financially stable and things are good. I feel so proud of the things that we've built. And so to have somebody tell you that it's not good enough, it's just a little bit hard. But I'm still confident that we're going to be able to work something out. And if not, I guess maybe one of you guys will lend us 150,000 euros. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna eat the sushi and then uh, we'll make a photo. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is a really gnarly cliff I'm standing on right now. Right off the edge, it's, I don't know, a couple hundred meters straight down to my death. So I'm being cautious and I thought, while I'm being semi-cautious, I thought I would explain what I do to make sure me and my camera gear is safe when I'm shooting landscape photography on epic cliffs like this. And there's really like three things I, I do. The first thing I do, is that I do a location scout. I worked in pipeline construction when I left high school, if you can believe it or not, and you used to have a safety meeting every day. And part of that was like walking around the site and looking for potential risks. I've done that. So I walked around the edge, checked for overhangs to see parts that weren't stable, and I've made sure that the area I'm standing is relatively safe or as safe as humanly possible. The next thing I do to protect my camera gear is the way I set up my tripod. And it might look backwards, but I always put two feet towards the cliff edge and one back. And when I do that, I have my tripod, this is a regular setting, I lean it back one tick, so it's actually leaning. And I'm gonna sit down because I'm uncomfortable. And the reason you do it this way is, watch this. This is a cliff to the death. If I bump my tripod forward, it comes back. It always comes back until I get to that point, that's the level point. So something has to hit it that far to knock it forward. So in this position, even if it gets bumped, it's always coming back. And the reason there's two legs forward is because if I bump it hard, it'll tumble to the side to safety rather than if I had one leg forward and I bumped it sideways, it would fall you know, forward and off the cliff. The other thing you have to do, and I know people that have done this, is make sure your quick release is on tight on your tripod. I've seen people that put the tightening knob lens front. When you do that, it's really hard to tighten that little bit and make sure it's good. So always have the tightening part of your tripod quick release at the back and then make sure it's on really, really tight before you start shooting. You do all those things and then sitting on cliff edges like this, is a bit of a breeze. Okay, so I've moved to probably actually a gnarlier spot to set up my tripod. It is on some like overhanging rock, 
but the cliff where I'm standing isn't overhanging, so I think it's safe. The photo composition just doesn't feel right, and I can't put my fingers on why. Yeah, I can't really figure it out, but I'm just going ultra wide, and maybe that's part of my problem. 15 millimeters, I've got a three stop ND because I want about two seconds of exposure. Just so this white water really stands out in the frame. If you go too fast, you won't get white water ringing around the rim of the frame. I might also experiment with 30 seconds. And then I've got a three stop hard grad ND to even out the sky. But with the sun over in that direction, I think it's probably not gonna be necessary in a couple minutes. So I think I kind of solved the puzzle of this photo. Don't mind me running along a cliff edge. Yeah, I just talked about safety. I do like the photo with the sky in it, add some color, but it's a much more powerful photo, I think, if I create almost a pano, like a YouTube crop 16 by nine, without any sky. Just the water and the light that's hitting the rocks from the side. I'm at F16, 13 seconds, ISO 100, and yeah, just shooting straight down, no sky. And I love it. Sometimes if uh, a composition isn't working, just try to figure out how you can be more simple. Oh man, this is perfect. I don't know if the photos are that great, but this moment with the last bit of sun kissing the rocks and just having this all to myself is just absolutely perfect. Instantly after the sun goes down, the location gets a little bit more dull because you really need that sun kissing the, the rocks. This has been so much fun and it's been so good to get my mind off of the adulting of adult life and uh, just be out at a location like this with you guys. Yeah, I'll be back on Sunday with another episode. I'm hoping to do some astrophotography it here in Portugal since there's always these clear skies but as you might be able to tell behind me it's like a full moon coming so who knows if that can happen or not but there'll be something on Sunday and that's it happy Canada day and I'll see you guys on uh, on Sunday peace <laughs>